Office Wife. The story of the girl who married her boss and of the girl who took over. The managing director of Tresida Bendigo and Company, Mr. Percival Fleming, is here to commence a further episode of Office Wife. Well, here's a fine how do you do. Jeff Pilgrim came into my office yesterday to say, what about putting Miss Bronson under contract? We don't want to lose her. Well, dear me, all our other senior girls are on the same basis. These days it's the only way you can keep your staff. So I said, fire away, sign her up for a year. Mind you, it did enter my head for a minute that Jeff might have an ulterior motive. But the chap has such a frank, open way with him that you feel caddish suspecting him. Well, the long and the short of it is that Stella Bronson's under contract to us, and just listen to the result. You're a fool, Percy. A blithering fool. Why couldn't you have picked up your phone and spoken to me first? But how was I to know? You could have used your head, couldn't you? What were you thinking of? But good gracious me, Tressida, when fellows like Jeff Pilgrim come into my office with what looks like a, a perfectly reasonable proposition, uh, what do you expect me to do? Uh, search about in my head for, for uh, scandalous motives behind it? You knew I was in two minds about the girl. Oh, that's all very well, but you can't expect me to be able to read your mind. Anyway, uh, we can uh, break her contract, can't we? We can bear compensation and a year's salary. Well, if it's so important, uh, a few hundred won't hurt us. This firm's never broken a contract yet, Percy Fleming. And we're not going to begin now. Not for Stella Bronson or anyone else. You mean not for your niece, Marcia? Leave her out of it. Well, dear me, dear me, uh, what are we going to do? No, oh, don't fidget, Percy. You'll get on my nerves. Get the girl up here. Let's see what she has to say for herself. Yes, Mr. Fleming? Uh, is uh, Miss Bronson there in your office? Yes, sir. Uh, send her up to me at uh, once, will you? Very well, Mr. Fleming. Do you want me to? No, uh, I do not want you. Uh, tell her to drop whatever she's doing and come up immediately. Very well, sir. Mind you, Tressida, I, I don't see what good this is going to do. You're in for a grilling, Stella. Watch your step. Oh, I can manage Percy Fleming. Jeff, suppose they want to question me about you. What am I going to say? What are you going to say? You'll tell them the absolute truth, I hope. But I can't tell them. I can't tell them. Now, look I'm... here, my girl. If your conscience isn't clear, mine is. Get up there quickly, or we'll have Mr. Fleming on the buzzer again. It's probably about your contract. Now, if you go for Pete's sake. Oh, I don't know. To think I used to like this job. Yes, Mr. Fleming? Um. Uh, sit down, Miss Bronson. Uh, Mr. Bendigo would like a word with you uh, about your contract. Yes. Now, look here, young woman. The contract was your idea, I'm told. Why did you want it? Why, simply because of the security it gives me. I'm not going to mince matters. How much do you want to tear it up? But Mr. Bendigo, I'd much rather not tear it up. Nevertheless, for reasons of which you must be aware, I'd like that contract done away with. Why stick to it? Well, be generous. My work's satisfactory, isn't it? I've heard no complaints. But a girl of your standing, you could find yourself another equally good position in five minutes. Now, come along. Why are you determined to stay here? I like the work. I like your firm, sir. I don't want to be bustled out of it for no good reason. I consider there are excellent reasons. Look here. Tell me the truth. And there'll be no hard feelings. Have you, uh, become, uh, attached to Geoffrey Pilgrim? Please, Mr. Bendigo. If you have, say so. I want the truth from you. 
Is there any sort of personal attachment between you and Pilgrim? Well, come on, speak up. It's no use sitting there hanging your head. Can't you say anything? Yes, I can. I'm very fond of Mr. Pilgrim just as a person to work for. He's generous and he's kind and he's considerate, but he doesn't know I exist. As far as he's concerned, I'm a secretary and nothing else. And all the hateful tattling that goes on here if is... If you find it so unpleasant, why stay? Yes, by Joe, that's the point. You set such enormous store by your firm, Mr. Bendigo. But in some ways, it's nothing but a collection of prattling old women. And I'm going to stay here till that contract expires simply because I'm not going to be disloyal to Mr. Pilgrim. Has it occurred to you that the best thing you could do for Pilgrim would be to leave the building today? No, it hasn't. Why should it be? Why should I let myself be hunted out because... I, because... Well, I'd better not say it, but I know why. Yeah. Well, there's no need to upset yourself, young woman. But it's not fair. It's not fair to me or Mr. Pilgrim. And if you think I like having my... Oh, things... hang it, Miss Bronson. We don't want to be ogres. Well, what are you going to do? Nothing. If this discussion has done nothing else, it's cleared the air. All right, run along. And if you feel like it, you can take the rest of the afternoon off. We're busy. I'll have to stay. All right, just as you like. Thank you very much, Miss Bronson. That's all. It was a very polished little act we just saw, Percy. But if it fooled you, it didn't fool me. Now then, that chap Palmer, can you trust him? Good gracious me, absolutely. Good. Here's what we're going to do. Palmer's a friend of Pilgrim's. He'll think he's saving the chap's hide. But uh, why drag Harry Palmer into it? Because this proposition I'm going to put to Geoffrey Pilgrim, well, if it comes directly from me, you'll resign in a fury. I'll never get my niece and him straightened out and will not find out what's going on between Pilgrim and the girl. Now listen, and after I run through it, I'll have Palmer up here for his briefing. I won't have my junior executives thinking they can pull the wool over my eyes, by Godfrey. What's up, Jeff, old man? You look as though you've lost your bat and ball. Oh, hello. Charlie, one more. Coming up, Mr. Pilgrim. Oh, not going home? What's this sense? Oh, later on, I expect. Oh, it's all a jolly bad show, Jeff. If only there was something I could do. I'm not maudlin or anything. I'm simply trying to work it out. You wouldn't like me to talk to Marcia, would you? Not unless you can give her a sort of mental facelift. I'll tell you what, though. You can take her out if you'd care to. What do you mean? You're asking me to, or... Uh giving me permission. Sometimes I think it'll be a good idea to clip you one power. Here, I say. Well, what do you mean, give me permission? Do you think I stampede about inviting Tom, Dick and Harry to go out with my wife? If you want to make a scene, Pilgrim, let's get out of this bar. What the... Oh, hang it. I, I'm sorry, old boy. I'm as edgy as the very dickens. <laughs> I'd better go down to the gym. Take it out in a punch bag. What did you mean about Marcia? Well, she won't go out with me. And you've known us both for ages. She'll just sit about at home. And I don't want to be completely selfish and see her completely miserable. Yes, well, considering the deal Marcy has been handling over the Bronson, I think it's very decent of you to give a continental. Look here, Jeff. Uh, I'm going to betray a confidence for you. Whose? Now, don't ask me how it happened, but this afternoon, Percy Fleming left his office intercom switched on to me. He was talking to Bendigo just after they'd had that session with Stella. And they're trying you out, old boy. Trying me out? Harry, I've just about had it. Why can't my wife and everyone else take me for granted? I'd get on better if I were a rat. Never mind. Just listen. And bear in mind that one or two things do look sticky for you. Stella's going to be told that unless she gets out, you'll have to get out. What the devil for? They want to get rid of her for Marcia's benefit. And they also want to find out if you two are keen on each other. Oh, with all the cockeyed, idiotic rubbish. No, it's not. I think it's rather smooth. If Stella's keen on you, she'll bow out gracefully to save your height. If you're keen on her, you'll puff your chest out and be noble. And if you're keen on each other, you'll get on your dignity and walk out together, do you see? Tressa the Bendigo. He's up in the air, Jeff. He thinks you've been deep enough to have him fooled all this time, and he's sore. He's saying to himself... Pilgrim thinks he can put one over me, does he? Well, what the devil's a chap to do? <laughs> See, one over the barrel, aren't you? Charlie, uh, more. Yes, sir. Oh, for Pete's sake, don't let on how you found out about this, Jeff. I don't want to lose my job over it. I won't let you down. But what the deuce can I do? Well, uh, look at it this way. Stella's contract has a clause. 
She can be shot out through inefficiency, dereliction of duty, negligence, and so on, can't she? No, oh, yes, there are three or four loopholes for the firm. Yes, and that's how well old Bendigo has you. You can break a contract and nobody else can. Stella works for you. He's putting it up to you. Get rid of her yourself or else. You see, Jeff, um, you can be fired. They said something about letting things go quietly for a week or so and then springing it on her. A week, eh? Of course, you could always tell Marcia you were kicking Stella out and patch everything up. So I have to make a liar and a hypocrite of myself. And find fault where there isn't any fault to hang on to my marriage and my job. And all because I have a fantastically jealous wife. I thought you didn't give a hoot for your marriage anymore. <laughs> I'll give you a good start, laugh, Harry. I believe in marriage. And I'm not going to let mine go on the rocks and I'll make Marcia see reason if it takes five years. I wish you luck, Jeff. Good Lord, look who's here. Am I butting in? Please say so. Well, I'm just going. Well, bang her. No need to rush off. Well, I'm overdue already. See you tomorrow. I've been looking for you, Jeff. I knew you'd be miserable. You pleased to see me? Yes, I am. Oh, I'm glad. No, don't get the wrong idea, Stella. I'm pleased to see you because we have to work fast or we're sunk. Let's grab a secluded table and I'll tell you. That you, Marcia? Ah, well, listen, Petal. If you'd like to catch them together, they're cheek to cheek in the downstairs bar at the Pelican. Yes, and I think they'll be there some time. Hmm? <laughs> oh, but Marcia, darling, why not do the job properly? Why not bring your Uncle Tressida, too? What's that? No, no, I'm in a public phone box. All right. Good hunting, kiddo. We invite you to listen to further episodes of Office Wife, written by L.J. Hardy, a Donovan Joyce production.